it's fair to say, isn't it, that not everyone is going to notice a substantial improvement in the service they get from the NHS. Today's plan has been developed with patients groups, with people like Cancer Research UK and Macmillan and the British Heart Foundation and Diabetes UK and AIDS UK, so as well as the frontline doctors and nurses who've helped uh, figure out what are the big improvements that the NHS should and can make over the next five years. We are pretty confident that with the um, five and ten year time frame that we've got, we will see big improvements in cancer care and heart attack and stroke care and also new services for mental health, which have been neglected up until now. But it's fair to say, on top of that, people who have more minor ailments may well not see an improvement. We want short waits for everybody across the NHS, and that's one of the reasons why there are now extended GP appointments on evenings and weekends in every part of the country. But we also know that for the most serious conditions, for the heart attacks and sepsis and stroke, it's really important that people get treated very, very fast. So what the top doctors are telling us is focus on that as well. Your biggest problem at the moment is a chronic workforce shortage. How can you make these promises without knowing whether you have sufficient numbers of staff to deliver them? We're going to need more nurses, more doctors, more therapists over the next five and they ten don't years. Plant trees. They don't, which is why it's so important that we've got five new medical schools coming online, why we're going to have an increase in the number of nurse training places of between a quarter and a half. But all of that will take time, which is why it's so important that we phase the improvements to recognise the extra staff we will need, but also some of the big changes that the NHS needs to make, giving people more access to care through their smartphone, being able to Skype their GP, being able to avoid a visit to a hospital outpatients because the consultant and the GP are able to talk to each other direct. So you are trying to manage people's expectations at this point? Well, we're trying to set out a set of practical, phased, but ambitious improvements that could mean that up to half a million people will have their lives saved over the next five and ten years. Uh, the report says um, action by the NHS is a complement, not a substitute for, for example, government shaping the health of the nation. Now, from minimum alcohol pricing to uh, controlling emissions, for example, mm -hmm. what does the government need to do to enable you to properly prevent people getting ill? Well, we're having a big debate in this country, aren't we, about the threat of childhood obesity, the fact that one in ten children when they start primary school are obese and it's one in five when they leave primary school. So there are things that we can do as the NHS, there are things that we can do as parents and there are things that frankly industry's got to do and that's why for example taking out all of this added sugar from fizzy drinks is an important start on that journey. A start on that journey, so you would like to see more legislative change, uh, more fiscal measures to try to enhance what you do? Well, the government set a goal that we will see a 20% reduction in childhood obesity. And when we are on track for that, then that will tell us that the uh, measures are uh, successful. And if we're not on track for that, then we obviously will need to uh, think more widely. So you would like to see the government support your preventative measures with more legislative improvement? Because at the moment, apart from the fizzy drinks tax, they're not really helping you, are they? Well, what the NHS long-term plan today does is set out the actions that the NHS itself can take. And so we're going to be doubling the size of the diabetes prevention programme that helps stop people get type 2 diabetes by losing weight. I think most people probably don't know that uh, being overweight or obese also causes up to 13 different types of cancer. So we're going to be testing new approaches that put people on very low calorie diets and have been shown to reverse type 2 diabetes. So there are a whole series of things the NHS itself will do, but sure, we also need support from many others as well. And just finally, when we sat down four years ago mm -hmm. and talked about the five-year forward view, yep. it was going to work because of investment in social care mm -hmm. and health prevention. That didn't happen and it stymied your attempts to turn around the NHS. Could we see the same again? I think there is increasing recognition of the interconnectedness of what the health service does and what uh, home helps and care homes do and one of the things that we are setting out in this long-term plan is how the NHS will also provide more support for people in care homes and also make it easier for uh, particularly older people with uh, frailty or other long-term conditions to get the community nursing and other support they need at home. But cuts in social care are just fighting against what you're trying to achieve? 
the Prime Minister made clear last summer when the NHS funding was announced that we could plan on the basis that over the next five years there would not be additional pressures coming into the NHS from social care and that will be a very positive and welcome development. So you had that commitment? That's what was said last summer. Thank you.